is some kind of tips and tricks. No one ever sit down and writes perfect scripts that run every perfect on the first time, right? Just you're going to have issues. You're going to have crashes. You're going to have debugging that you require. So how do you do it? Or how do you get around some things? Following these will certainly help your future self. Uh, so save your intermediate steps. Um, so, you know, you need to prove your work, your boss or reviewer number three. You know, were your thresholds that you were generating good? Were they over threshold? So if you just output a spreadsheet that says, wow, this is all my number. And then suddenly in the I have like 10,000 down, you know, what's going on there. Uh, it'd be really good if you could just then go to the output and find all the input middle uh, image there, imaging to see well, what's happening, why you need to up. And then maybe you need to create a you know, case for that in your script. So basically, you don't just have a text file output, don't just have your final image when you should find, say, your working steps so that you know um, if something goes wrong, wherever. Use um, good variables, don't just call it variable one, two, three, or you can count something. But also it'll clean time and comment everywhere. So that exercise we had before where pretty much like every line we're basically learning out what we're going to do. Um, helps if you give the script someone out, they can understand it. Um, as much as the Fiji macro commands are pretty self-explanatory, um, Having these guys will also mean that, you know, someone might, or you might need to edit a script that you wrote a year ago. So you got to get back in that mind space of what you were doing. You know, what are your variables called? What's this section trying to do so that you can, um, you know, figure out that and fix it. So use simple language because other people probably need to understand it, including yourself. The comments in code, you've probably seen these throughout. Um, it should be all well documented, um, your scripts, but you can use the black with the write out a common. So, this line of code is okay. We it priority. Better. Um, you can also write big blocks of, or walls of text, or if you need to toggle on and off different sections of code while you're testing stuff, you can use the slash siren and then start slash wrapped around and then that multi-line comments your um, code. Another good kind of process is to do pseudo coding, kind of just debate and write out what you're going to do. Um, and so you can comment them all. But um, if you write out in general words what you want to do, the aim of it, and then all the steps, you, you can go and populate that with the code because Hopefully by the workshop, you know all these things. Um, and you can use the macro order to kind of you know what you want to do once just to duplicate when rather on the whole folder. And that can help you as well. And that pseudo code will come in here to you slot. Debugging is you know knowing how your program is working or where it's not working. So make it work on one image first where you have the the infected result. So you should kind of do this round truth, right? If you wanted to find a nuclear access on the image, make sure it doesn't do what you think it's doing. You have to rely on the bridge to the end. Um, and often, like, I'll take one of the image out of the folder images and just work on that. You don't need to run the script to test it on 500 images because if it crashes when you're writing out the log file right at the end, you don't want to sit there for half an hour while it runs. Only crash at the end. Um, use print statements. Tell you where your program is failing. Because my code will have like, I've got up to here. And if it doesn't print that, I know it crashed before that. Because sometimes in loops and things, you can't really figure out exactly where it's going wrong. I print the file name because sometimes you might have a folder of images where you think they're all dead stacks, but one of them was that one that you fed when you had two B stacks. None of them were in there as a check for them. It can break. The printing thing, you know, where it's up to, what it's doing, uh, it, it's important. So uh, that's the idea. Uh, say you got everything you put on your image, and you save that down to a variable for that, check and print it out. I expect it is. So you see that.
I went to the outline of the code, it can help you figure out if that's the bit that's broken and causing more issues. It does also now in Fiji say there's an error on line 112 or whatever. Well, uh, it can help you get past breaking points. So you know, say you had this as your uh, code and you have the file on your background color and you get this error. If you come out that, then obviously it'll run. And the solution is that you can't have a fully value 400, it would be two by five max. It doesn't tell you when an error is though that this has to be two by five max. So it might be obvious too, but blocking out and commenting code to break that can help. PG does give you debugging tool. So you can have a mistake in your code and it'll pop up that you haven't got. And if you click this show debug, it opens up the tape. Um, it'll try and kind of flag what it's struggling with. So if my code here had time to find, to find the lowercase t and I print out and use the uppercase t here, it's going to go, I don't know what that is. So the error, it puts the greater than equal to, uh, greater to, greater than less than signal around what it's confused with, right? Um, and the debug window also puts that statement here and it will tell you the line and it also shows you the other variables that are at. So the hint here would be, it doesn't know what that is, but it does know that there's a lowercase. Sometimes, annoyingly, if you have really long commands, like this has like this character limit that will print you. So unfortunately, sometimes your error might be digging off the screen, but it'll at least point you in the right area of the code to look at. Um, but that should be something that you can do. Sometimes I'll intentionally break a script. So I'll just put midway through the code and, like, F. and then it'll get to there and go, well, what the hell, F me crash. But then I can bring up a table that shows all of the, um, all of the variables that it's holding. And I can try and use that to point me in the right direction as to where it's going wrong. Um, so. Where can you get help? Well, then it's image.xc. It's the main website for all things image analysis and thing G and all the different open source programs have um, forum collection there. The only problem that you come across is probably something that someone else has come across. So you can always Google. If you are putting in what you're trying to do and not getting a result, you can also tell Google, you know, add image.xc and it will try and search that site. Um, there's probably some category of something, or you can post stuff there. You can go add it, it's broken. Um, and they'll direct you to who kind of brings it or fix it, or they'll say, No, we're not updating month, like what I asked a while ago. But you can pop over there. I have a GitHub page. Um, there's a bunch of jump on there. It finds there's a strips that find bacteria yourself, all that stuff. So if you're looking at the, you know, you're going to do that, you can look at my code and. You should be on a fair. Yeah, Google your problem and add something like well, IJ Yang or Fiji Macro. You don't have that. You tend to get photos of Fiji and tropical islands. Um, or Nick J Macro. Also, that PPT. Or I haven't tested it, but I actually am. GoPilot can probably do it as well. Can do stuff. And we have our image click on Mondays at 11. That's just a Zoom call that you can pop in and go, how, how would I do this? Or can I get help? So yes, chat GPT, we're going to give you a program. Thank you, John, today. So I'm going to run it locally on YouTube and Chain, so I don't like that. Um, but you know, you can, here I asked the thing, you help me make a feature back earlier. I am going to ask the user where it directs your image is in, open them sequentially, and that's the text of the report that you got. And it gave all this. And it looks pretty good. And um, there was one, and it gave me a duck ink, so copy this, open feed you from the back row, um, and how it works, so it explains the stuff. But, that's, I did, but I get an error. <laughs> Red says there's no image of the opening line 19, because in this case, uh, it didn't have that checking, so it, if you did have a folder of images, it would be right, um, but, it's not terrible, but it, it may not be perfect either. So that's somewhere to think about. All right. If I can ask you, I'll send out an email anyway. 
and blue session, please fill in that form. Um, it does help us, you know, uh, justify running these things if, and, and, and feedback. You go, I really like this. I didn't like this. Um, we've certainly over the year, like, that the third or fourth time we've run this workshop and we've changed with a fair bit, which is from exercise with happy to take feedback, happy to try and apply it where we can. Um, and I should thank as well, LNA, because they sponsored one of the sessions of food and SQMS, PBI, and I didn't mean my customer sponsored the other session of food. 